Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China from my new mini studio. I took a long look at the constitution of the People's Republic of China, and the link to that is in the script that I've attached. I'm not going to bore you with an in-depth analysis, but I am, I think, going to surprise you with some facts. So when someone tells you that people in China have no rights or that they are oppressed, you can show them this to prove they are wrong. I argue with people on a daily basis about China and how oppressive or authoritarian it is. The discussions usually go in the same direction, so I'm going to explain how I answer when people tell me that I'm mad or crazy or paid to say this. First of all, several independent and Western-backed sources have already confirmed Chinese people support the government. Harvard spent 13 years investigating this. The Edelman Trust Barometer confirmed it earlier this year, and a Statista research from 2016 to 21 reports that Chinese government satisfaction now sits at over 90%. Why is that? Because for every single year, life for most Chinese people has continued to improve. And when it doesn't, as we've clearly seen, people get out and tell the government what they want to improve. And as we've also clearly seen, the government listens. They have to. It's in the Constitution. People will tell you it doesn't matter what the Constitution of China states, because China is a police state. And when they do that, I ask them, can you give me specific example of Chinese police brutality? I'm willing to bet they can't. As far as I can ascertain, not one person has been shot by police or died in police custody for more than 15 years. I've had many interactions with China's police and I've never seen an act of aggression from a Chinese police officer. I'm not saying it's never happened, but I'm saying I saw it often in Australia. I saw it multiple times in the UK. In almost two decades, I still haven't seen it in China. Let's go one step further and we'll ask whoever it is that you're debating with to name their sources. They'll then tell you, everyone knows. But if everyone knows, there must be hundreds of examples, except there aren't. So then ask them what experience they have of China. What did they see when they were there? And for the most part, they'll tell you they've never been to China. Those few people who have been to China and still persist with this argument need to be a little more specific and should be able to give you examples. I'm 100% certain they won't give you anything except a feeling they had when they were in China. Feelings aren't proof. Even CNN and BBC can't give you proof. All they do is sit in the back of a car and pretend to secretly point a camera at a vehicle that's following them. And then they'll whisper in furtive voices that it's full of plainclothes police officers as evidence of their oppression. After the protests of a couple of weeks ago, I've seen all kinds of rhetoric in Western media about how China is cracking down on the protesters. But the truth of the matter is, they aren't. They are certainly going to crack down on the instigators of violence or damage. They'll probably attempt to arrest and charge people who were paid to protest, as well as the people who paid them. But shouldn't that be happening in every country too? What they won't do is track down and punish the thousands of people who were outside voicing legitimate concerns. And surprisingly for many people, the reason they won't do that is because in China, the Chinese people have a constitutional right to protest. Yes, you heard me correctly. Article 35 of the Constitution provides a right to protest, and as far as I can ascertain, not a single person has ever been arrested just for protesting in China when that protest has been peaceful. So when your debater tells you it's illegal to protest in China, please ask them, what's the act and section that prohibits it? And can they show you a reference or a link to it? What they will show you are headlines. 
Those headlines lead to articles which assert, suggest, surmise that China is doing something without any actual evidence that it is. What China does do is it cracks down on illegal protests. Once again, isn't that what our countries do too? If you're in any doubt, there's a link to the BBC report where Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says he's going to do exactly that. In Australia, it's a little more complicated. Different states have different laws. But a search of any state using the words how XX state cracks down on illegal protests will show that Australia's overbearing civil disobedience laws already have the human rights organizations worried. And in the USA, according to the Pew Trust, the BLM protests had so many legislators worried that eight states immediately passed and a further 21 states debated and most subsequently passed laws that made it illegal for more than three people to gather where public security is threatened. That's now a riot. In fact, in China, the opposite of a crackdown is the truth. A 2015 Swedish university researcher found China has about 180,000 protests each year. It's almost 500 a day. We never hear of them in our news because Chinese people, when they protest, are not usually aggressive. And when Chinese people protest, the local government have a constitutional requirement to listen to what they say and to respond to what they need. If anything, the recent responses in changes to COVID restrictions must be seen as a great example of that. And the fact that not even CNN roaming the streets of Beijing and Shanghai looking for their stories can find any mass arrests for protests which took place just a couple of weeks ago. So, okay, your detractor will say, assuming you haven't scared them off with your logic, your grasp of the facts, and your ability to quote sections of the Chinese constitution to them. They'll say, Chinese people aren't allowed religious freedom and no one can deny that fact. Except I can. And tomorrow I will. Today's all about protesting. Tomorrow I'm going to tell you about religious freedom. For the time being though, thank you for watching. Please do the right thing. Like, share, subscribe and help me to get this message out. Please feel free to read and share the attached article and confirm any or all of the supporting documents for yourself. I've linked it all in there. Ask me any questions that you might have in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. But for the time being, see you tomorrow with religious freedom. Thanks once again for watching Jerry's Take on China.